Hello everyone, today we'll be covering uh, rates of reaction or better known as reaction kinetics of CIE A-level chemistry. This is the AS part of reaction kinetics and there isn't much to this. Most of it is just recap from your IGCAC year. I think there's only introduction of one new concept. But anyway, uh, you have to know and be able to answer past paper questions. So in today's video, we'll be covering a recap of uh, the factors which impact the rate of reaction and introduction to the Boltzmann distribution curve, effect of catalyst on rate and type of types of catalysis. Um, in your previous, in, in your IGCAC years, you had equilibrium under the topic of reaction kinetics or rates of reactions, but this is a whole different topic in your A-level chemistry. Okay, so let's begin. So the first part is just a recap of the factors which impact rate. Okay, by rate I mean rate of reaction. Yeah. So the first factor is the concentration. Okay, the concentration of the reactant and the higher the concentration the greater the rate of reaction and the reason why that is uh, so in rates we refer to collision theory and that the successful collision is what leads to the proceeding and completion uh, the completion of the reaction and so when the concentration of a reactant is increased the amount per unit volume increases. Therefore, greater frequency of successful collisions, so faster rate. Okay, that's, that's, the, first fact, that's the first factor. The second factor is the surface area. And this is mainly in case of solids. Yeah. And it's the same here. The greater the surface area, the greater the rate of reaction. And the not, not this part, this remains exclusive to the concentration, but there's greater frequency of successful collision in surface area and therefore a faster rate. Uh, the powdered form usually has higher surface area than the form of lumps. Yeah. And that's something that you know from your IGCAC years. I've never really seen an explanation being asked for the increased surface area in your A-level chemistry, but anyway, you should know in case they ask. It's very, it, it's not that common though. Anyway, the third thing is pressure. Pressure P, which is mainly in case of gases. And increased pressure increases the rate of reaction. And the reason is because the gases or fluids occupy a smaller volume therefore because they occupy a smaller volume frequency of successful collision in your A-level chemistry you have to be very specific you won't just get away with saying collisions you have to say successful collisions frequency of successful collisions is greater therefore uh, increased rates okay the fourth thing that impacts the rate of reaction is okay what was that okay uh, the fourth thing that impacts the rate of reaction is the presence of a catalyst no wait before going on to the presence of catalyst just say temperature sure yeah and it's obvious the greater the temperature the greater the rate of reaction now for temperature, there's two points that you have to refer to. The first point is obviously the simpler one. Okay, wait, wait, that, okay. So the first point is the more simpler one, which is same for all, that uh, the, the frequency of successful collisions is greater, but also with increased temperature, okay, wait, there's greater, okay, no. Before that, you have to mention the common ground. The common ground is that with increasing temperature 
increases wait, with increasing temperature increases the kinetic energy because when there is an increase in temperature there is an increase in velocity and kinetic energy is half mv square right and the temperature is basically the average kinetic energy for those of you who take physics you should know this uh, but anyway so there's an increase in kinetic energy and therefore there's two reasons here the first reason is that because there's an increase in kinetic energy greater proportion of particles have energy that is greater than or equal to the activation energy from your cc years remember that the activation energy is the minimum energy required to start the reaction right so there's a greater proportion of particles that have actually kinetic energy greater than activation energy that is the first point and then the second point is that because they move faster greater frequency of successful collisions and therefore rate increases so these are the two points that you have to refer to when it comes to temperature okay and the last point uh, sorry the last factor is catalyst and what a catalyst does is in presence of catalyst the rate increases the catalyst doesn't directly affect the the collision in any way like the frequency of collisions it does not have an impact on that at all but what it does impact is uh, the pathway or the mechanism of the reaction so what happens is, in presence of a catalyst, uh, an alternate pathway pathway to the reaction is provided. Now, because there's an alternate pathway to the reaction, what happens is uh, this lowers the EA. Yeah, the EA is lowered, and therefore greater proportion well this 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 sentence a greater proportion of particles that have kinetic energy greater than ea yeah and therefore faster or increased rates of reaction now these are the five factors that the rate of the reaction depends on there's also a sixth factor but we don't usually consider it but for photochemical reactions for photo chemical reactions light uh, impacts the rate because there's photo right so for an example of this is photosynthesis the light dependent stage it is completely dependent on the present and the intensity of the presence and the intensity of the sunlight right so in photochemical reactions only the rate of reaction is impacted by the amount of sunlight or the intensity of sunlight but uh, you don't really deal with many photo you don't deal with any photo photochemical equations or reactions in your cia level chemistry but it's just better to know in case yeah so those are the five factors the five main factors that impact the rate of reaction and it's best you know all of these so the next thing we'll be moving on to is the different types of catalysis. Yeah. Types of catalysis. And over here you don't really need to know much, just what the different types of catalysis are and just know their definitions and be able to identify the examples if they appear in your exam paper. So the first one is homogeneous. And in homogeneous catalysis or for homogeneous catalysts, the catalyst is in the same phase or state as reactants. The common examples of this are something in your A2 syllabus uh, where Fe2 plus acts as a catalyst, which we won't be covering now. Another common example is something that appears in your organic chemistry. Uh, and that is NO2 acting as a catalyst, as a homogeneous catalyst. So it, it happens in the formation of sulfur trioxide. So SO2 plus NO2 reacts to give SO3 plus NO. And this NO is oxidized in air to give NO2. So over here, the nitrogen, see, you see that the nitrogen dioxide 
is regenerated by the end of the reaction and it provides an alternate pathway. The details of the alternate pathway is not needed. All you have to know is that it acts as a homogeneous catalyst. The reason why it's a homogeneous catalyst is because the NO2 is in gaseous phase, which is the same as the reactants that it reacts with. So over here it's gaseous and over here it's gaseous as well. Yeah, I hope you understand. And the second, the second type of catalysis is heterogeneous, and that is the exact opposite of homogeneous. Heterogeneous catalysis or heterogeneous catalysts. And in this case, the catalyst is in same, uh, not same, sorry, different phase or state than reactants or relative to the reactants. A very common example of this is the Haber process, the formation of ammonia. So N2 plus 2, no, 3H2, which gives 2NH3. And if you recall from your IGCAC years, one of the conditions of this reaction is the use of finely divided iron catalyst. And this iron is in solid state, yeah. Whereas these are in gaseous state, and therefore this is an example of heterogeneous catalysis because the iron catalyst is in a different phase uh, than the reactants. The next part of the reaction kinetics in your AS is well the last part, which is the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. This is, I think this is the only new thing along with the types of catalysis uh, in your AS syllabus. And I think it's the most important as well as they, some, they mostly or sometimes they ask questions regarding uh, this graph or this curve. So what this concept is, is just basically a curve, yeah? And the curve is in the y-axis, we have number of particles. And on the x-axis, we have the kinetic energy corresponding to that. And what happens is something like this. The graph is something like this. And in the graph, somewhere around the end for a normal temperature is the E or the activation energy. Yeah. And the reason why the graph goes like this is because uh, it's similar to a normal distribution curve, but not exactly like a normal distribution curve. So the majority of the particles have like the average kinetic energy, and this is the average kinetic energy yeah and some have much beyond the average and some like some have much lower than the average and uh, that's pretty much it for the Boltzmann distribution curve now in your syllabus uh, you don't only simply have a Boltzmann distribution curve you have uh, how Boltzmann distribution curve alters with respect to two specific conditions one is temperature and the other is catalyst, the presence of a catalyst. This is rather simple, just recall the definition, but uh, we'll do it either ways. So the first part is when, for temperature, the first part is when temperature increases. Yeah, so this is the normal Boltzmann distribution curve. Go something like this, yeah. Ki kinetic energy, number of particles, and here is the EA. So when temperature increases, uh, recall from your definitions before, when temperature increases, what happens? When temperature increases, the number of particles with, the, like, the number of particles, ki sorry, the kinetic energy of the particles increases, right? So there will be more particles with a greater kinetic energy, uh, and this causes a f increase in the frequency of su successful collisions. Well, that part is not important. So what happens is, now, the average kinetic energy, because the kinetic energy increases for all the particles, or most of the particles, uh, it increases, right? So the average kinetic energy, it shifts to the right. Shifts to the right. Now, yes, for most particles, the kinetic energy increases, but it doesn't increase equally for all particles. And that's why the new peak is lower. So these are the characteristics when temperature is increased.
these are the characteristics of the alterations so the new curve will be something like this so it increases has a lower peak and then goes something like this yeah so you see uh, for this curve the average kinetic energy is greater right average ek is greater than the average ek here and the peak is lower but at the same time the number of particles that have uh like energy kinetic energy that's greater than or equal to the activation energy like here is greater than here so that satisfies the criteria of what happens when the temperature increases in the rate right now the second case is when temperature decreases and when temperature decreases the characteristics of the alterations are exactly the opposite so for the previous case the curve shifts to the right hand side and the peak becomes lower so for this when temperature decreases the curve shifts to left hand side and peak is greater so it's something like this so it shifts to the left hand side the peak is greater and it, oh wait sorry the curve shifts to the left hand side no, wait curve shifts to the left hand side peak is greater and that's how it goes and ek is somewhere here sorry ea is somewhere here so you see there's a lower number of particles that have energy that's greater than or equal to the activation energy i hope that makes sense and the second uh, and the second factor is the presence of a catalyst so what would happen if a catalyst is present so here's the graph yeah number of particles and kinetic energy and this is the original activation energy so you know that when a catalyst is present the an alternate pathway to the reaction is provided and so what happens as a result of that alternate pathway the activation energy becomes lower so for presence of a catalyst you just have to draw another line and say that this is ea2 i.e like the activation energy when catalyst is present that is it for the Boltzmann distribution curve now uh, in your papers uh, for the Boltzmann distribution curve you just mainly have to be able to identify the changes so for instance they'll give you a curve like this and then they'll give you a curve like this and you have to be able to identify uh, what exactly is going on so they'll say that there are two different temperatures and these are the graphs of two different temperatures so you should be able to identify which one is lower which one is higher so what happens when it's lower temperature the curve shifts to the left hand side and the peak is higher so this is when temperature is lower right and they'll also ask you they'll give you a graph like something like this and they'll be like okay it, it won't be exactly like this because it doesn't follow the norm, normal distribution perfectly so it'll be something like this yeah it'll be something like this and they'll give you the uh, activation energy for one and they'll be like a catalyst is now used so what's the new activation energy all you have to do is add another line and just say that this is ea2 so when the catalyst is present right so this is all you have to be able to do in the maxwell boltzmann distribution curve for your reaction kinetics in your AS syllabus and that is all for reaction kinetics in your AS syllabus it's really simple most of it is just recapping if you do have any doubts please leave them in the comment section below and if you understood and if you liked our video please feel free to like the video and subscribe to our channel